What is good YouTube and welcome back to the channel. JD here with yet another video for you guys. So last year, Travis Scott had a pretty rough year. After his Astral World debacle, he ended up getting dropped by Dior and there were rumors circulating that he might even end up getting dropped by Nike. Turns out that wasn't the case. And now this year, after quite a long hiatus, we finally have some new Nike and Travis Scott sneakers. And in this video, I'll be reviewing the Travis Scott Cactus Corporation Air Trainer 1. So what's up guys to all of my long-term viewers, welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time here, my name is Josh. I do sneak reviews and all types of other sneaker content. If that is something you're looking for, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm dropping at least three videos a week. And if you're looking for even more content, make sure you check out my podcast available on Spotify and Apple Music, the Kickback Pod and give me a follow on IG as well. I'm very active there too. So here it is, the Travis Scott Air Trainer 1. This is the wheat colorway. I heard it's also being called the light chocolate colorway. And after quite a long time, we not only got this pair, we got three other Travis Scott sneakers all dropping on the same day. There was another colorway of the Air Trainer 1 called the gray haze colorway. And we also had two colorways drop of the long awaited Air Max 1 Travis Scott. All of these sneakers were actually supposed to release last year in November and December. Instead, we finally get a release date almost six months later. And out of the four, definitely the pair that I was most interested in personally copying had to be this brown colorway of the Air Trainer 1. The gray haze pair, also quite interesting. In fact, that colorway and that shoe reminds me very much of the Air Yeezy 2, that platinum colorway. I definitely wanted this one more. However, it's much more of a Travis Scott looking shoe. But before we even get into these shoes, I know for a lot of you guys, this might be the first pair of Air Trainer 1s that you have been interested in. So here is a very quick history lesson on this model. This pair was first released in 1987. It was created by Tinker Hatfield and he created this shoe because he was tired of taking so many pairs of shoes with him to the gym. He would have one pair for lifting weights, one pair for playing racquetball, another pair for running. So he came up with the idea of creating a multi-purpose shoe and that's kind of where the Air Trainer 1 came from. And some of the most famous athletes of the late 80s and early 90s wore this shoe, including Bo Jackson, Andre Agassi, as well as John Mack. McEnroe. However, nowadays this model isn't so popular. It doesn't really fit in that well with today's sneaker tastes. But Nike, of course, is trying to change all that by getting probably their biggest hype man, Travis Scott, to collaborate on this pair. And honestly, guys, I think Travis has done a really good job here. Let's get into the box. So the box of the sneaker does kind of remind me of those off-white boxes. Not too much design going on here. You simply have the Cactus Corporation logo on the top of the box. And when you first take the shoes out of the box, they look like this. They are covered in this shroud that seems to be made out of ballistic nylon from what I can tell. And the shroud is held in place by these buttons that are across the upper of the shoe. And speaking of the upper, the upper is made out of a combination of materials. The mud guard as well as the back panel of the sneakers seem to be made out of this synthetic type of material. On the toe box as well as the tongue, you have this perforated suede. And then on the lateral and medial sides of the sneaker, you seem to have what feels like a corduroy type of material. And getting into the colorway, I'm a pretty big fan of this colorway. You got different shades of brown, some light tones on the back, darker tones on the mud guard and the back panels. And then you get these subtle hits of pink on the shoe or rust pink specifically. On the back, you have that Cactus Corporation logo done in that pink color. The swoosh on the lateral side features that chocolate brown color as well. And then on the medial side, you have that iconic reverse swoosh that you see on most Travis Scott sneakers. I didn't particularly like how on the gray haze pair, there was no swoosh on the lateral side. I think it would have looked better if it had a swoosh. Some other features of this shoe, you have Cactus Corporation written in big letters on the strap of the sneaker as well as the back. And then another Cactus Corp logo on the tongue done in pink. The laces that come with this pair are these hiking style laces that are done in brown and you also get an extra pair of black laces. And then having a look at the outsole of the shoe, the outsole of the sneaker is quite different than a regular Nike Trainer 1. It's covered in these studs and as you can see right in the middle of the outsole there is a US patent number. I even went ahead and looked up this patent number and it is for an athletic shoe for artificial turf with an improved sole having integral polygon shaped studs. And the sneaker also comes with a useful stash pocket built into the tongue 
and the stash pocket is actually meant to be for that shroud. The shroud actually even comes with some folding instructions of how to fold it and stuff it properly into the tongue of the shoe. The one feature that I dislike the most about the shoe, however, has to be this zipper at the back. This is supposed to be actually another pocket, but it's definitely not another pocket. You really cannot fit anything into here. It's, it's pretty much just a completely useless zipper at the back. And what's even worse is that on both my right and left pair, once I unzipped the sneaker, I actually couldn't even zip it all the way back properly. Now you can see right here, it kind of just got stuck right there. It doesn't go all the way back. Just something to watch out for. I'm not sure if every pair has that issue but mine unfortunately did it also makes this rattling noise when you walk because the zipper keeps hitting against the shoe you probably won't really hear it if you're walking outside but if you are in a really quiet place like i wouldn't wear these shoes to a library because they will hear you walking from a mile away getting into sizing so i did get this pair in my true size which is a us 11 and they fit me perfectly and not only that i gotta say guys this is my first time really wearing a pair of air trainer ones and these are super comfortable shoes it is called the air trainer after all, so I am assuming that there is an air bubble in this midsole. And I also really like the strap on the sneaker. It really feels like your feet are locked in. I was actually looking for a nice pair of shoes to wear to the gym, so this actually might end up being it. And let's get into what these are going for right now on the resale market because this model is not too popular. That is definitely reflected in the resale prices right now. Most pairs and most sizes are going for under $300, which to be honest is a very good price for a pair of Travis Scott sneakers. I don't actually see these going up too fast in the short term. So if you are on the fence thinking about whether you want to buy it or not, you can definitely take your time to make that decision because there's not a whole lot of demand for this model. Overall, the Travis Scott Air Trainer 1 in the wheat colorway, are these a cop or a drop? So my good friend and co-host of my podcast, Fabian actually called these sneakers his favorite Travis Scott sneakers of all time. I'm not gonna say that however I will say I actually really like these shoes especially after getting them in hand. I love the earth tones on the colorway. I also like that they put the reverse swoosh on the inside of the shoe rather than the outside so it's not too loud of a sneaker either. And even though a lot of people might think it's a bit gimmicky I actually do really like this cover on the shoe idea. Every now and then you might be wearing your shoes outside and it unexpectedly rains. So it's good to have an emergency cover for the shoe. And like I said before, I am very much impressed with how comfortable these sneakers are. They're also not going for too much on the resale market. So I do actually think that these are a cop. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you found it useful, of course, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time. Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to the video after the video, also known as the group chat. If this is the first time that you have made it to this part of the video, this is a new segment that I have recently introduced and I will be doing in all of my videos. Basically a little something extra for the 20 or 30% of you that actually make it this far in the video. And we're just gonna be using this part of the video to talk about different sneaker topics of the moment, maybe topics related to the sneaker in the video, or just something completely random. For example, this sneaker, I couldn't help but thinking how confused British people must be right now. Oh, those are nice trainers, fam. What are those? Oh, you talking about these? These the Nike trainers, isn't it? Yes, I know they're Nike trainers, fam. I can see the swoosh. Man's not blind, you know. Man's got glasses. But what type of trainers are those? What's the model? Are you not listening, bruv? I just said it. These are the Nike trainers. Are you stupid, fam? Right? No, but for real though, this sneaker actually was pretty impressed with how comfortable they were. So I am going to be using this as my new gym shoe. So it had me thinking, do you sneakerheads out there, those of you who go to the gym regularly, what sneakers do you actually wear to the gym? Do you wear your high heat type of shoes? Or are you just wearing some beaters that you don't really care about? Up until right now, I've been mainly wearing Jordan 1s at the gym just because it's flat at the bottom. And I like having a nice flat sole, especially when I'm doing deadlifts or squats or something like that. But yeah, let me know what you guys like to rock at the gym. And thank you so much for sticking around for this part of the video. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.